Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about INTP personality type. And you're an INTP if you blend together the values of innovation with individualism, if you blend together the need for philosophy and existential thought, original thought, with the need for skill, for tactics, and for wit. If you blend together the needs of variation and change with the values of science and reason. If you think in the terms of a scientist of what is rational, what is the smart way to do something, what is the best method to achieve a certain result. And if you mix this with the need for privacy, for having your own independent state of mind, your own independent thoughts, your own unique thoughts, and ways of seeing the world. You're an INTP if you value the chance to truly become good at something, to truly become skilled at something through hard work and practice, 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 just working to improve yourself, to develop yourself, to become better at something. Yeah, INTPs often excel through a lot of unique skills and special skills, skills that very few other people have. INTPs tend to excel by studying themselves outside a crowd, not being like everyone else, not thinking like everyone else, having their own ideas and opinions about things. INTPs tend to set themselves apart by being agents of change and catalysts in the world, lovers of dialogue, creative dialogue, new ideas and opportunity to improve on and to do something differently. Yeah, the INTP is usually the person in the group that comes up with a new idea. Let's do it like this instead. Let's do it, try this method out. Let's do it in this way. They have, they have their own ideas and they often come in retaliation. You know you're dealing with an INTP because they always have a suggestion for an improvement to what you're doing. They can always think of a better way to do what you're doing. And in this way, perhaps they sound a little bit critical, like they're coming down on your ideas. But really, think of it like this. You're giving them an idea, and you're giving them a chance to improve on and to expand on something and to develop something. You are the initiative. They are the people that come in retaliation to that and add to that. So don't see it as them criticizing your work. See it as them taking your work and adding layers to it and improving on it and making your idea better for everyone. When dealing with INTPs, what you want to notice is they're tactical people. So they're often going to come from the perspective of thinking and perceiving. They're going to be thinking in retaliation to everything you say. How can it be better? How can we improve it? How can we do it in another way? And this is tactical in the sense of a person playing chess, a person looking at the moves everyone else is making. What move is the best for me to make them? And this is a typical introverted and perceiving trait, you know, looking at what I can do as a person. What can I do to make things better? Looking at themselves as individuals, introverted and perceiving types tend to look at themselves as the self, you know, thinking of, who am I in this? What can I do in this situation? What is it that I can do better? Looking at everything we're doing here, looking at society and looking at the tribe and the people and the community around me. What can I do as a person in this situation? INTPs are philosophical types. So they're going to be thinking very deeply about things. They're very much going to go into their own head and they're going to develop their own thoughts. And what you might notice is they're not always going to be saying their mind. They're not about necessarily speaking their mind. They're not necessarily about always saying what they're thinking or always expressing what's going on. But they tend to go inside. You know, when you go inside for a very long time without sharing things, it can become very weird after a while. So often what INTPs will find themselves uh, doing is uh, developing their thoughts, developing their beliefs, developing existential opinions, you know, formulating their own worldview. What they're doing is they're formulating their own worldview. You know, imagine there's this uh, crowd mentality which we're all thinking is true, what everyone believes to be the truth about the world. You know, this kind of folk truth. And then think about uh, existentialism. What I've noticed is INTPs are one of the sensitive types in that regard that they need to have, and they need to have practice their own imagination. They need to stretch their own imagination. They need to have thoughts about things. They need to 
have formulated in a kind of existential framework to deal with reality. You know, there are people that can just jump out into reality and go, here am I, oh, everything's happening here, it's just happening, it's just happening, and it's just the uh, way it is, you know. But an ITP, they need to know why everything. Why is that the way it is? Why is that place there? Why does this work that way? So they have this desire, and this blends together with the needs of a scientist, you know. They need to have a reason. They need to reason about the world. And they need the world to be and operate in a kind of logical way. So there needs to be some kind of methodology behind the world, some kind of framework, rules for how it works, you know. So INTPs love to think up what are these rules? What is it that makes this work? What is it that makes everything bind together? And of course this can pull you into uh, naturally scientific situations, but it can pull you into and be used in almost every situation in life. It can be used to understand the dynamics of life. You can think of life as a kind of program, a kind of software. You can think of the code of life and you can think, oh, social dynamics. That's all based on these rules. The All social dynamics are based on these rules. Uh, the art of being a waiter and dealing out food that can be done in this way and according to these rules, you know, everything has rules, everything has codes, there are codes around everything. So INTPs, they love to master these codes and to use them and to apply them and to change them a little bit. What happens if I do it like this instead? What happens if I break that code? What happens if I add that line at the end of this code? Like if in these interactions with these people, what happens if I do this or if I do that instead? So they're Natural, natural experiment there is in many ways in social interactions and that can also make them very funny, very funny indeed because, you know, they're kind of playing with everything around them, they're playing with reality, they're playing with the people, they're playing with the system and um, they're playing with the rules, they're bending the rules, scientists are rule benders, you know. Uh, a lot of people can become very constrained behind how we always do something and we can, because we're not thinking of it, we can start reenacting it over and over and we're not realizing that we're just participating in a play in a sense, but INTPs, they know it's a play. So that gives them a kind of power to look at the play and to come up with options and to come up with ideas to change it. And uh, what you're looking at is basically matrix, <laughs> the matrix, you're looking at Neo in the matrix, you're looking at the person that realizes reality is like a social construction and the person that can bend the reality through their own thoughts, they can reshape the entire fabric of everything around them. So the ideal state INTPs are looking at is they're looking to become like this Doctor Who-like figure that can basically alter time and space and everything around it. You can alter reality, you can rewire everything around you, make it work differently. And INTPs, they love to customize like everything to every solution to every situation. Uh, they're the people that come up with and um, build their own remote controls to, to add new functions to do things better. There are the people that are coming up with better ways to <laughs> open doors. They're coming up with better ways to cook. They're coming up with better ways to do things. Sometimes it's going to seem like needless in a sense that why do we even need this? Is it really worth the effort? Do you spend so much time developing that function? Why? What's the purpose of that function? But you know, it's a part of developing skills as well. Like uh, ITPs love the thought of uh, developing themselves and adding things and becoming good at something so that's also why NTPs are usually the people that have these really weird random skills you know, suddenly you need somebody to pick a lock and oh the INTP knows how to pick a lock. How do they know to pick a lock? Well, they surfed YouTube and they found a video about lock picking and they thought maybe that's interesting to know. And suddenly they watched that and they practiced that and suddenly they know how to pick locks. Even if they're never going to need that skill, even if that skill has no purpose, they love the thought of getting skills and becoming good at things. And INTPs, here's a trick for all of you. If you're looking to develop your confidence, develop your skills. Your skills are directly aligned with your confidence in self, your ability. So what you want to be doing, what you want to become better at is just this ability to develop uh, your skill sets and to have a broad skill set and to be really good at this skill set. So you want to be so good at something that you can do it and you can break the rules. And you, you're, <laughs> you're looking to... 
um, become the kind of person that knows something, knows the rules so well that you can basically break any rule whenever you want because you know how it works better than anyone else. As an INDP, what you're looking at is uh, also developing yourself as a catalyst. This is really going to help you and it's really going to help your confidence. You want to look at how to vary your environment, how to change your environment. The more you can change your environment, the more you can alter things around you, the more you can feel like I am able to change things, I'm able to alter things, the more you're going to feel confident in yourself. Your confidence not only aligns with your skill set, but also aligns with your ability to be a catalyst. So if you can look at things and say, I did not just uh, do something well, but I did something different. I changed something. That's also going to be a huge confidence boost to you as an INTP to see that, oh, I rebuilt this. I made this in a whole new way that nobody else has done this. I played this guitar in a way that nobody has played this song before, you know. The ability to do something new that nobody else has done something before, that's going to be very good to you as an INTP. Now, you're going to be looking at this, but you also want to look at your ability to regulate your emotions and to find stability and to find esteem, belief in self. You're really going to want to nurture your belief in self. And you're going to want to nurture that by basically gaining knowledge. Gain a lot of knowledge about something. Really push yourself to know something, to know something inside and out. Study, study, study. Basically, as an INTP, esteem is directly linked to your ability to develop rules, to develop knowledge, to develop expertise in a subject, and also an existential awareness about something. The more you know about something, the more you know about a situation, the more you understand it philosophically and existentially, uh, the stronger your ability to feel stable in this situation. You know, you might notice sometimes that a situation is going to be overwhelming. You're going to get into a situation and it's going to feel overwhelming. And it's going to feel overwhelming because you don't know it. You don't understand it. Why do people talk like that? Why do they do that? Why is the situation shaped like that? Why does this workplace work like this? But if you can find existential awareness, if you can reason about a world, and if you can come to get knowledge about how things work and why they work that way existentially, that's going to help you a great deal in interacting with and finding stability and peace in the world. And when you don't have this, what you want to get is privacy. Take your time to be private. Take your time to go to your off by yourself, to think, to understand. Take your time to study. Take your time to read. Take your time to learn. And make sure... That you get this because when you're not getting this what you're going to be feeling is you're going to start feeling agitated frustrated annoyed stressed so that's very important to look at and it's also going to be look important to look at uh, your four negative drives you have four negative drives that you want to think about and uh, you're going to want to think about how you deal with these things because you're going to have to accept that sometimes it's necessary even if i don't like it but you're also going to have to realize that you can't let these things control you. You're going to have some fears, and all people have fears. Your fears are going to be directly linked to your personality type. They're going to be linked to your fear of being caught or imprisoned or trapped in a situation you don't like. And this is going to hit your intuition and your perceiving, your need for variation. Uh, your fear of being trapped and controlled is very integral to you. You, know? you don't want to be controlled, so you might avoid situations where you feel that you might be trapped or controlled. Uh, but what you might want to do instead is you're going to want to speak up for and take and to protect your need for change and freedom in these situations. And you're also going to be afraid of becoming one of the herd, you know, to just be like what everyone else, to just be a nobody. You're going to have this fear of just being like everyone else, of just being one of the people in the crowd. And uh, sometimes this is going to keep you from relating to your peers and the people around you. So... You can't let this fear keep you from interacting with and joining in with other people. You're always going to have your own unique, independent mind, no matter how much you hang out with other people. As long as you give yourself privacy, as long as you give yourself time to have your own opinions, and as long as you listen to yourself and to your own inner voice and nurture your own inner world, it's going to be fine. What you're also going to be looking at is... Um, a fear of offending the community in a sense or of saying something that will hurt other people or of uh, accidentally making 
uh, social doo-doos, you know, <laughs> to make mistakes in social situations. Uh, you're going to have this fear sometimes. Uh, and sometimes it's going to keep you from uh, trying out new things. It's going to keep you from trying out new things. And it's going to keep you from, uh, in a sense, showing off your skills and showing you're good at something. Sometimes uh, I see INTPs are afraid of raising their hand and saying the right answer because they're afraid of, I don't know, uh, beating social protocol, breaking social protocol, or doing something uh, that other people will look down on them for. So I see a lot of people, especially girls, like female INTPs, hiding this in themselves and keeping this very much to themselves. Uh, you're going to want to look for an environment that embraces your skills and uh, uh, admires you for it and looks up to you for it. So if you find yourself in an environment where people don't accept you for this or for being good at something or people look down at you for it, you're going to want to look for better peers, you know, people that really respect you for it and go, wow, that's really impressive. I, that's great that you can do that. I can do this. <laughs> you know, people that can com be, compete with you but also appreciate you. So finally... Another important thing to look at is uh, your relationship with the people, you know, and the community as a whole. Um, there, like I said, it can be a fear of uh, being one of the herd or just being like no, just being like everybody else. But there can also be a fear of, uh, you could say, the community as a whole and what they are going to think about you and what they are going to feel about how you do things and who you are and their opinions about you. You might be afraid sometimes of going out where you don't know anything, going into a situation where you don't have the skills, knowing, going into situations where you have to go on feeling or guts and judgment or on social values or morals, when you just have to do something because it feels right. And um, ideally, as an ITP, you want to have a reason for everything. Why does something feel right? Why is something a good idea? Why do we do something? Like, can I understand this rationally or logically? Can I uh, know this is a good thing to do Rog on a rational level as well? But uh, in some situations, it might be necessary to let uh, your feelings decide and some things you won't be able to have awareness of rationally. And sometimes, no matter how much you think about something, um, reality changes so quickly that the reason can't keep up. So just accept that those situations will exist and there will come situations where you can't just think about something forever, but where you actually have to act and just do things because it feels right. And um, whenever you can, of course, you're going to be at your best if you can think about something, if you can uh, master something and if you can understand the rules about something. So if you can, think about it. But if you have to make a decision, about emotions or based on emotions don't be afraid of doing that because that can also help you move forward in life so i hope this video helped you all and i'm going to end on just a quick question are you more of a scientist like a person that seeks a rational awareness of the world are you more of a reviewer you know somebody that wants to know what's right and wrong and how something works or do you relate more to being for example an actor you know a person that is seeking variation and change all the time you're a person that wants to change things a person that wants to be a catalyst that wants to have new ideas that wants to come up with new ways to do things like inventiveness are you Perhaps more of a director, you know, a person that wants to be good at something, really, really good at something, you know, wants, wants to have some kind of amazing skill or something you're really good at. Or finally, are you more of uh, writer, you know, somebody that wants to have unique philosophical ideas and beliefs about something, you know, someone that has gained tremendous insight and awareness into something. Which of these four traits do you relate to the most? Feel free to share down below and thank you all for joining in this video and feel free to share your thoughts about INTPs. If you like this video, leave a like, share and subscribe and I hope to see you all in the next video.